Hello and welcome to another Adobe Acrobat video. So you can see we've got four elements on the page. We've got vegetables, we've got allium, we've got a picture of an onion and the text onion. I've also selected a few things here. We've got content, we've got uh, order and we've got tags. What we need to do is we need to build our page structure. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use something called the reading order panel, which is this. It says draw a rectangle around the content and click one of the buttons below. Okay, so we're going to draw a content around the vegetables. You know, you notice a few different boxes appear. If you look at the content panel, and you actually look at, say, this text of vegetables, you can see those boxes correspond to these sections there. So we're going to say, well, we want this to be heading one. So that then makes this here. If we look over here, you can see we've got a tag heading one, and that's going to be selecting that. Okay, what's next? We've got the allium next. So we're going to draw a box around here. We're going to check in this panel here. And this can be heading two. Uh, you can see in the text panel, also got that one there. Okay, so now we have, let's just make sure we're in the right spot. Okay, so now we're going to draw a box around here. And you'll notice the onion is selected as well, which we don't really want. Press control, you get a little minus there. So we're going to just draw around that, and that's going to be our figure. Okay, now you notice that put it to number one. So we want to make sure that if we go back to the reading panel here, we want to make sure that is actually number three. And then you also notice that the onion has actually disappeared. Let's move it back to number two then. That way we can actually see the onion and we can select that and then we'll fix it in a moment. So then we're going to select the onion here and that's going to be our heading three. Okay, so how do we want this to be? Well, we want allium to be number two. And then the image is three, and then the onion is four. Now, what else can we do here? Well, it says no alternate text exists. So we may actually want to have some alternate text for that. So another thing you can also do is you can select it here. And if we take a look here, we've got H1, H2, figure, and H3. So that actually works out pretty well. What you can also do now is if we go back to the content panel, and we look at our figure here, you can right click here, and this is the point where you can actually do set that all in the text. So we can go to this panel here, and we can just say this is a picture of an onion. And this is for the screen readers, and we'll let you uh, read that. So here you can see once we go back into the, this panel here, you can see we can retag the structured information. The final thing I do want to point out is this thing with the onion. You can see the onion is there. If we put the onion back here, it disappears. But this corresponds to the same thing. What happens if we move this down to the bottom? It doesn't disappear. So this can be seen as something which is more like back end, whereas this is actually much more related to actually what you see on the screen. What it means, of course, is that you can organize your tags in a way that makes much more sense. And you could you could aggregate the figures together, you could put the different headers together. Whereas in the read in the order panel, you really need to actually you need to have things in the right way so that you don't have objects like this which are on top of each other. Okay, and that's really all I wanted to talk about, so thanks for watching. Hello, welcome back to another video. In this, we'll be looking at the distiller video that I made as opposed to the PDF maker. You can watch my previous video to find out about that. Now, in this one, we're going to talk about organizing pages. So pages is something, where if, we, if we look at the icon which we need to press, the icon is essentially the one on the right-hand column which is like a 3D cube. Like if you imagine you wanted to get an A4 piece of paper and turn it into a 3D cube, that's how you identify the button that you need to press. There are obviously tooltips, but to avoid having to uh, always press the tooltip, it's, it's good to actually, uh, you know, it's, it's just good to know which one to go to immediately. So once you do that, we open up the pages panel, which has been changed and improved for recent versions. Uh, as you can see, we can do various things. We can change the size here. Um, and you also have the the option as well, is if you want to zoom in here in this sort of left-hand section, so there you go, there's like a closer zoom, right? I mean, you could just, you could sort of look around certain areas of the text. And then, and then from there, you could basically do your editing, right? So if you needed to do like a, a highlight or something, you'd be like, okay, we need to highlight this area here. 
Okay, so what else can we do with pages? So one thing we can do is we right click on a page, you're gonna get like a few different options, right? Um, so for example, and what I just shown this, um, we could for instance, insert a page, uh, whether you, however you do it, um, we'll just do a blank page here. You're essentially gonna get this menu. So you're gonna have location, so before, or after. So it's basically looking at the selected page and you say, I want, I want this to be a page that we're gonna do afterwards, right? Um, we can insert at the beginning of the end. So you can see what happens is essentially we're going to get uh, three pages like that. All right, so we can actually try also um, another thing would be crop pages. Uh, so with crop pages, this is the set page boxes dialog. So essentially, if you wanted to get into this um, dialog, what you'd have to do is you could do it that way. Also, if you wanted to have access it from the toolbar here, all you'd have to do is go to organize pages, find where it says uh, the set page boxes, which is there. Click this button here, press save. And then essentially you're going to be able to uh, access that that directly from the menu on the left. And here, for example, um, if I wanted to change the uh, margins to 0.25, for example, uh, I could do something like that. So another thing we could do is when we select the pages, there are different ways to select the pages in the pages pane. So say we wanted to just, we had a bunch of pages and obviously it's oversimplified. So say we just wanted to select pages one and three here, and we wanted to extract them to a, a different document. Okay, so what we could do then is we'd hold down control, make sure this one's selected. So essentially, if you want to select selections such as pages two to five, then you could just press shift. If you want to select individual ones, you do have to hold down control instead. So control, I would hold down control here, then select the third one, and then we have two selected. And what we can then do from there is we can extract the pages. So it will say pages one and three, extract, and then we can actually and can also um, extract pages as a separate file, or we could delete them from this document. So if this is part of a larger document, we could then delete it from here. So that's all about pages. So thanks for watching. Hello, welcome back to another Acrobat video. In this one, I'd like to look at some options I put here on the left hand side, which are adding text and also adding image. I'd also like to add headers and footers here. So what we'll do is we'll make sure we have headers and footers in there as well. So we save that, you can see now we've basically got uh, adding text, adding image, visible page area, adding header and footer. I don't actually like that one, the way that is. So what I'll do is I'll put um, this guy up here. So what we'll do then is, uh, say we wanna have a new page on the second page here. Add in a page, insert page, blank page after, and here is our new page. So what can we do on the, on the page here? Well, we can do uh, text boxes. So once we do text, it takes you into the edit menu. Um, so let's close that. And then we can see we've got a bit more space to work with. So in the edit menu. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. The edit menu basically knocks the toolbar to the right hand side. Um, this is actually a wall here on the left hand side, so you can't actually move it beyond that. That might be an interesting way to do things. Um, so from here you can see I can draw my text box. And then once we click in the text box, we actually have access to everything. So we can do our favorite fonts. So, okay, so we made the text, right? Uh, it's worth pointing out though, we've got select and pan. Let's look at pan. So pan is just gonna do that. Right, let's say exit this menu. So you'll notice that once we go out of the menu, we basically can't do anything. And this is kind of quite, I'm only quite, a lot of people when they're using Acrobat, and they're not used to it from Word, because they think, oh, I just want to get rid of this text. Uh, but and, and then things like that happen, you get like strike through. That is not the right way to do it. You always have to make sure that you're in the right area. See, once you go in here, then you're able to do it. So essentially that's the way you have to look at it. I want to change this text. I don't just jump in and press backspace, even though the cursor is doing that. I make sure I press this button, then I do make, then I jump in and, and do my edits, right? So then you may you ask yourself, well, if that is the case, um, um, why am I actually in, the, what, what is the point of even being able to select this text? And the answer is it's, it's purely for copying. So for instance, I could copy with the formatting. Well, the way to paste it is actually quite straightforward. All you have to do is you click on uh, the text tool and I decided I want to paste this text over here. So what I'm gonna do is right click and draw my text box. As I let go of the button, I see I get the option to actually paste the text in. So that is the way that you would actually, if you wanted to copy and paste it.
So just to do that one more time, we want to copy uh, this text now. We're going to make sure we copy it. We're going to click on the text box. We'll go down to our area that we go down to the area that we want it to be. Right click, draw our text box, hit paste. Hello and welcome back to another Acrobat video. In this one, we're going to be looking at uh, adding an image. So if you can't see this here, you need to go and customize your toolbar. But uh, for now, we'll just uh, put our image in. I'm going to choose this A45. And you see, we get this small image, and we can basically just pick where we want it to be. And if we just take a look where we click, you see it basically sets it to the top left hand corner there. So if you did want it to be there, you would probably want to move it up or something like that. Uh, and what options do we have with this image? Well, uh, one option we have is called crop. So you see, we can start from the vertex point. Once you go over a vertex point, that could be a uh, corner or midpoint vertex. Um, I guess that's technically not a vertex then, but basically this will let you do the uh, that sort of movement. And then obviously you have uh, in two uh, axes being able to do this sort of movement and you can crop it uh, as much as you want in that respect. And obviously you've got some, you can do remove crop. Uh, let's see what else we've got there. Um, you can do edit, you can put it into a different program as well and you can arrange it. And obviously you've still got the uh, the scaling as well. Also important uh, with, with looking at images is if we look go down here on this menu, you can see we've actually got the option to do a background as well. Do add background. Or if you still look, look at the backgrounds, generally for a document, I've often found stuff like this works well. To if I, if I scaled it up to like four hundred percent, a lot of a lot of backgrounds like that kind of work quite well. You see, I could just scale it up, and it would, it would automatically look like a piece of paper. You could even like uh, change the opacity. You basically have a lot to work with on stuff like this. But what if you wanted to do something a bit more exciting than that? Um, the other background I was looking at was, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, this one. This one obviously is in the right format in terms of it's like an A4 piece of paper. That was why I actually looked at it originally. So you can see it, it kind of looks like it's going to fit in a little bit anyway. So you notice that when I change it to like a higher value, um, it's just zooming into the picture. It's not actually changing the, uh, the the size, right? So it's better to leave it at 100 like that. Yeah, 40 might be okay. Let's just try that. So you can see that it kind of looks like it's really just like a picture anyway, right? Um, So I guess it's it's almost like placing an image is not really that different from, uh, you know, and then we can still do all our options here, right? And, and also we'll, we'll just check the arrange thing. So for instance, here's the arrange button, center back. You see, we could put it behind the background if we wanted to. Um, I'm, there may be some differences. I have to look into that, whether there's actually a difference between adding an image and adding the background. But on this evidence, it doesn't suggest there's a huge amount of difference. Now you may be wondering, like when I do stuff like this, for instance, um, Nothing seems to be happening with regards to snapping. Uh, there is a way to do that though, which is in a view, show hide, uh, rulers and grids, and you can do snap to grid. That isn't actually, in some programs, it's actually default, it's on. Uh, so let's have a look now. So you can see now we're actually snapping to the grid better, right? Uh, it's not snapping to the object. I've made another video actually about um, text boxes. There's ways that you could, um, you could get around this as well. Um, if you wanted to do snap to grid. Um, and just as a final thing, I want to replace the image. So, yeah, so if you want to replace the image, you just press replace image and we'll do say this one. But this is obviously like an easy way. You just do remove background on Photoshop. It's kind of like straightforward. This point is, 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 is a useful spot to do the rotation, right? So if I do it about this, it, it's going to get closer to where we need to be. Yeah, see in this instance, right? I want to move it up. But because the box is too big, this is actually a situation I think where you would do a lot more cropping. Okay, so you can just deselect. You see, when I clicked outside, it deselected as well. Now this would let me place it, place it higher though, in terms of that. Snapping's actually not on here as well, is it? You see, even control and stuff. Normally, like shift and control would do something here. Uh, it's different. It's different in Acrobat though. It doesn't really work the same. Um, I'm probably never going to get it quite where I want it, to be honest, this thing. Um, that isn't bad, though, though. Anyway, that will do for now, so thanks for watching.
Hello and welcome to another Acrobat video. In this one, we're going to be looking at bookmarks. So bookmarks is this button over here, and you can see you're going to get basically something clear. So how do you set a bookmark? So one thing we could do is we could, for instance, select some text we want, maybe the introduction here, then right-click, add bookmark. And that and in that way, we'll actually add the name there. Uh, the other alternative is we could go to uh, get rid of that, and we could just basically choose where we want to be on the page, right? So we could go uh, down a bit, and then we just do add bookmark with control B. So we want it to be here. And then what about if we wanted to do to be, for instance? We could do control B here. And it's remembering basically the placement where we are on the page, right? So we can see we're up there, where they were to, in to be, right? So this way we can go through different things, um, different areas of the page. Uh, now, one uh, concern that people do have is they can't actually, for instance, this one word order is actually more difficult um, and to actually set the bookmark here. So you'd actually have to be much more careful. So, for instance, if I wanted word order to be at the top, you might think I'd be able to set it there, but you actually can't. And that's because um, Acrobat doesn't allow multi-page targets. This would be called multi-page targeting. So, for instance, if I did a bookmark here, it's, it wouldn't work correctly. So you have to be kind of careful of that, right? So we can drag that down to the bottom here. And you see, basically, it hasn't done it right because it only wants to target an actual page like that, right? If you'll notice these ones, there's only one page visible on the screen. These ones, only one page visible on the screen. So you can't actually do a multi-page target. So if you wanted to do something like that, you would have, kind of have to, um, you'd have to do something a little bit, uh, it kind of can do it a little bit. It's, it's, it's very kind of uh, dicey though. You have to go, basically about there, and then we can go set destination. So we can do that, there's to be, and there's word order. So you wouldn't be able to get it exactly how you would want, right of the page. Um, I think it's basically, it's it must be to do with the percentage of the page that you can actually select. So you can kind of get it on. A lot of, a lot of uh, the issue is to do with the view. So yeah, so basically it's because I've got single page view as well. Um, uh, so, yeah, these are the ones. This is basically as good as you can get it. Um, so that may be okay if you're not if you don't care too much about having it absolutely perfect. Um, but you see, in this situation, right, if I wanted to get to be absolutely perfect right there, I would be I would be able to do it completely correctly, right? So you can see that in in that respect, if you know that your headings are always going to be towards the top half of the page, basically as long as all your headings and all your bookmarks are going to be in the top half of each page you can do it perfectly in this manner. Um, now, what else can you do? Well, one of the other things you can do, you can obviously rename your bookmarks. Um, um, you can do properties as well. So for instance, if I wanted this to be a more uh, important topic, we can make that bold. We could also change the color. And you also have the actually uh, ability um, to change some things here. Um, so you can, do a bunch of different options here. You could open file, open link, play sounds, play media, all sorts of things that you could do here, right? Um, but we'll, we'll talk about links um, and we might focus on that a little bit more in that section. Um, and of course, we have also the editing, right? So you could change the zoom level. So for instance, if we wanted to also nest to the bookmarks, we could right click, um, add a bookmark here. And we could drag this one all the way to the top. And then we could nest these ones in like that, right? So we could just nest them in. So we could say, yeah, okay, we want to go word order. We want to go to be. Um, it's not actually too bad um, as long as you keep in mind that you could, as long as you sort of look at, maybe look at this as a midpoint, you can actually potentially do it in a way that is, it depends, it, it depends uh, like uh, how much you care about having it right at the top of the page each time there. Hello, and welcome to another Acrobat video. In this one, we're going to be looking at links. So what are links? Well, links are not uh, hyperlinks. Uh, in an Acrobat document, it's different. It's basically an internal way of viewing the document. So how does it work? Well, basically links are rectangles that go over the text and, and you can then do certain things with them. What I'm gonna show is a page view example. So you can see here that the, basically we wanna be able to draw rectangles and we're gonna draw them more or less where the boxes are. Uh, and you can see this button here, I've just decided to put it on the toolbar just to be a little bit uh, easier. So let's do a, um, let's say we want to have this area and we want this to be massive, right? When we click on it. So what we do is go here, 
add or uh, edit web or document link. So it's gonna we're gonna be like I say, it's gonna be document links here. Um, so we'll look at the place we want to draw it from, and we'll draw our box. We'll draw it about. We can draw it here, right? We've got visible rectangle, solid. Uh, so you've got your choice between visible or invisible, solid. I'm just going to do kind of like quite a obvious looking one, to be honest. And the link action is going to be go to a page view. Okay. So it says use the scroll bar, mouse, and zoom tools to select the target view, then press set link to create the link destination. All right. So what we're going to do then, so we can actually just change the size of the box a little bit to try to, uh, that'll probably do for that now. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to um, go, we'll just zoom in on it. So say we wanted to have it something like this, then we do set link, right? So what's happened now is essentially, if we click on this box, it's going to do that. And then now to return to normal, normally you press control one, uh, you also control zero, uh, that would be command obviously on Mac. So basically gives us this like cool way just to go into a different view like that. So again, let's do that again. Um, so we're going to do a link here and we want to maybe look at, uh, just look at this box in here, right? So we'll draw the box and we'll keep everything the same. We'll do next, use the scroll bars and mouse. Okay, so say that's a good spot. Just press set link. So now, for instance, if we're going through the course, we can say, welcome to the Latin course, control one. And then, and then when we're talking more about this section, we can zoom in on it. Now, where would this be useful is if you really wanted to go zoom in massively on something. If you, had, if you had a very large document, like in landscape mode, for instance, say we wanted to have a ridiculous um, zoom in on just a very small area, right? This is where you would think it would be much more useful. Um, so we'd say zoom in. Okay, so say we have, wanted to have a really massive zoom like this. Um, it's not quite the right font size, but we'll just just do an example, right? Um, we could go through here. Good look at that. Go one. And being able to to go like from such like completely different sizes and stuff. Um, because it's very possible that like a small area might have uh, more information right that we need. So the, in the previous uh, section, we looked at creating links to uh, access different page views. So for example, we looked at this and this. And then we even did one which was much smaller, like over here, right? So we wanted to, so we could see like there's different ways to create page views. So essentially, when we click on the link, it takes us to a page view. Another method of actually going to a certain point is using named destinations. So if we look in here in side panels, you can see we've got this thing called destinations. Okay, so let's look at adjectives, right? Uh, let's have a destination over here. So we're on page seven, and this is gonna be adjectives. Okay, so say we wanna to go to adjectives, and we're gonna do it by clicking on this box. So this is useful for if you've got a chart or something and you wanted to go to a chart instead. So what you could do is you could edit the link, and take a look at this, right? Now in the action section here, we press edit, we've got the option for named destination. And there it is. So we just basically click it in there, use named destination adjectives, okay? And you can see it takes us to that location. And again, let's try it with this, uh, this one here. So instead of that, we're gonna not go there. We're going to go to a name destination. It's going to be adjectives. Go there. So you can see that what is actually occurring here is actually overruling what we did uh, previously. All right, welcome back to another video. And this one we're going to be looking at creating a form. So in this episode, I'm going to look at how we're going to create uh, boxes that uh, people can fill in uh, for the class title and the date. So to start with the class uh, title, um, we're going to go this button here, uh, create a form from scratch, template or existing document. So this is going to be the existing document, right? So you can see that it gives you a little uh, thumbnail there. And we're just going to press create form. All right, so you've got this fields thing has popped up there. 
And you'll notice on the left, we've got the whole um, tooltips uh, for everything that we need. So what we'll do is we'll do a text field for the class title. And we're going to just put it over here. And we'll just maybe adjust the size a little bit. Like I said, I'm not going to worry about like other things like alignment and all this stuff. Um, and so what can we do with this? Well, if we right click, we go to properties. And it gives you a bunch of different things you, you could do. So for instance, class title. So that's basically going to be the uh, name of it, right? Um, and this is going to be a, uh, a five-digit class code. So say, like, this is just what I'm, I've decided to do. So that's what we're going to do. Now for appearance, um, I'll do a border of uh, black, a thickness of thick. And the uh, fill color, I will do this uh, with this. And the one I like is that inset. So that looks kind of cool. And uh, also bump up this to 18. And we'll leave the rest of that. And then for position, this is if you want to be super specific um, with the actual, uh, if you've got like grids everywhere. Um, now options, uh, we'll put it in the center of the field. Um, so uh, about this, I'm not really going to change anything. The only thing I'll point out here is that uh, you can link it to a file. You see it's grayed out. If you just uh, deselect this box here, uh, if you want to get access to those ones. But I'm not going to do anything there. This is actually similar to what you have on um, when you do um, link destinations and uh, internal links. I've done that on previous videos. Um, so the format category. Um, but this one, we're going to choose special. Um, and I'm, I'm here. Uh, the reason I, I, I set this as five digit class code is because I decided basically just completely arbitrarily that the code is going to be the name of the name of the program you're using, in this case, Acrobat, and then just three uh, uh, random numbers afterwards. So how do we actually set that in the format? We go to arbitrary mask and what we can do here is if you want to have um, just letters A to Z, uh, you basically do, you say, you do AA. So this doesn't mean that they're going to be A's. It could be any letter from A to Z there. And if we're going to have a, a number numbers after that, um, you do 999. Nine, nine. doesn't mean the number's going to be 9. It's just going to be a, a digit from 0 to 9 in each of those slots. So basically, we, we're, we're creating a situation where you can only enter uh, the, the code in the correct sort of format. All right, so that's good, and then that's it. All right, so what happens? If we get to preview here, we can see what has actually happened. So you can see, we're going to hover five-digit class code. Okay, so that's what we need to put in. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say, actually, we're going to, I want it just going to, have to put something wrong. So it doesn't match, match the field AA999. Okay, so we want it to match the field. So we're going to say, well, it's Acrobat, and we'll just do uh, 500, and then it will work. So that's how that might work, for instance. Um, now, what about the date field? Again, you can see uh, this one obviously has got its own thing here. So we'll just uh, put the box in. Again, I'm not going to worry too much about uh, um, many things here. And then we'll go to the properties of this one. And general, so this is going to be uh, date, uh, application date. Uh, appearance, I guess we should probably uh, do them all the same. So uh, it's going to be black, thick, uh, with the yellow inset. And what else we got here? And of course, we actually changed the font size as well. Um, you know, I'm just trying to be consistent here. But anyway, um, and this was central. And we'll leave everything here. Now, for the format, I actually looked at this format, right? There isn't, there isn't a proper um, European format here. So what does that mean? It means we have to do uh, custom. So in Europe, for those that don't know, you basically would say DD, MM, -Y, y. That's how normally how you would put the uh, the date in, uh, in, in, yeah, in most places, I think, in Europe. So once we've done that, we can close that. And again, we'll go to the preview. You see application date. And what happens is you get this little thing occurring here. So when we choose a date, for example, we'll say uh, yesterday. 
it will put the date in there in the correct format. So thanks for watching. All right, welcome back to another Acrobat video. And let me just re rename that one. That has dates in it. All right, so what do we want to do now? Well, we are currently, let's do control zero on that. Um, we're obviously doing a, the various aspects of a form at the moment. And the one that I wanted to look at next was the drop down list. So basically there's like, you can you can use like the radio button ones are kind of interesting. It just creates a bunch of buttons and then you can just uh, make uh, select one exclusively. I do think a drop down list is better though. Uh, so we're gonna look at that one for, for now. And we might try um, some other stuff as well. So let's make our uh, box here. All right, and let's see what we've got on this one. So we take a look at this. And the name of this one, as you can see, is going to be the location, right? And again, just to be consistent, I do actually think that what I've chosen here is, oh yeah, I didn't ever actually open that box, but um, of doing uh, black, doing that, and then with the yellow, in the um, inset and the size 18 font it does make a does make a good box basically. And we're going to put select state in tooltip here, and then we're going to put a few different states into the option section here. Um, so let's try. We we'll just do like uh, a few here. Kentucky, and then in the export value we put that, and then I guess we'll do four right. Um, let's see what other states I've got on this list. Uh, Georgia, maybe. So that is G A. And add. And uh, what other one? Texas. Add. And the fourth one, I will go for Tennessee, I think. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, and that is. What is that? T N. All right, let's also do this one. Allow user to enter custom text as well. So basically, this is a, a different um, a different value. It'll, it'll let the user type that in. We can also click this here. You can see it will actually sort the items uh, alphabetically. All right, let's see how that's gone down then. So you can see we've got a drop down list now. And we can also do like uh, enter in. So that value would also work as well. And another thing that's kind of interesting is that you can actually add your text directly in here, right? So you don't actually need to go exit the uh, edit PDF form section. And for this one, preferred programs, I like it. So it's shift control seven on that one, yeah. All right, and this one we want to look at the list build box. So that we had a drop down list there. Um, and now we're going to go for a list box. So we'll take a look at this. Uh, software. And this is going to be select uh, uh, favorite software. All right. So again, we're going to say Acrobat here. And we're going to actually use what we used in our previous episodes. And so that's AC. Now, the reason you use the export value is because this is actually for use in the actual uh, database. Um, it won't be able what the person sees, but obviously if you're viewing a database, uh, it may, rather than having a long word like that, it may help to have a bit of a shorter word. Um, so we'll put in a few uh, programs in here. You can actually see them being populated in the list in real time, which is kind of interesting. And we just, again, we'll do four after effects. All right, and you'll notice here we've got the option. We'll do, we'll do, we can do sort items, multiple selection as well. So this is also um, unique to this box. We might look into. We're going to look into a lot of this stuff in uh, subsequent episodes. Um, uh, let's have a look at the preview on that one. It's interesting that you can see we've actually got a little uh, scroll bar there. 
Yeah. So all the sort of control, you know, you can press control if you want to select manually different items. So pretty cool, right? You can do like a bunch of different stuff. All right, welcome back to another Acrobat video. In this one, we're going to be looking at doing basically a simple calculation here. So I'm using also the uh, bullet points here. And uh, we've got three fields and they're all text fields, price, number, and total. And what we've done here is done the price in the format of a number with uh, two decimal places and the pound symbol in front. And then the number is going to be a number with zero decimal places. And then finally, in the total box here, I basically did a calculation of uh, this, this uh, custom script here just to get uh, kind of an accurate figure. Because sometimes if you basically just do it, there's, there's two different ways to do it. Uh, and I think basically if you're dealing with always the same amount of decimal places, you could just do it something like uh, this. But because obviously uh, number is an integer and price is got two decimal places, doing it this way can be uh, basically fraught with some issues. So if you look at what that might be like, um, uh, so you can see with what that should be £16.40 there, right? So that was why I decided to basically change this up and instead of using that to do uh, uh, this instead, you see it automatically went to the correct value. So thanks for watching. Hello, welcome to a video looking at how to create page navigation in a document in Adobe Acrobat. So you can see we've got a 20 page document. I wanna basically have next page and previous page options available for me. So the first thing we need to do is add some text so we can actually see what buttons to click. Uh, instead of using add text, we're going to do add text field there. And then we're basically going to have a button here. And this is going to be uh, basically the previous page. We can go into all properties here. And we'll make sure that uh, we're going to do a larger size here of 30. And that's all we really need. You don't really need to have too much for this. And then if we click here, we'll actually be able to put that uh, text in there. And then we also need to make sure we have this button, the object selection. This actually lets us select the box. Uh, if you, have, you haven't got that in your document, uh, you need to go to Customize Toolbar, and then we also need, then need to go to Add Rich Media, and you'll find it there, Select Object. Um, so like I say, if we want to add, can't move the box from this, from this selection, we have to do it only from this one. And then what we can basically do is just get a, a box there, and we'll just put it there. So again, just to show that one more time, if we want to do a text field, basically put it in here and this is going to be the other side so it's going to be um, greater than this time we'll go into all properties We've got uh, that there we'll do say again we'll do size 30 and yeah I didn't actually I didn't even change much there to be honest um, and again if we just go into our selection um, and then, and then, like I say, if you just uh, click on this, so we can actually edit the text, we can put that in, and then we can just adjust the box uh, however we need to, right? So it will give a little, uh, um, so yeah, so it doesn't really matter, like, um, did I actually move this? Yeah, let's actually, I might just leave it, might try and get a bit more consistency here. So basically, what we've got then is two boxes, right? Um, so what we might want to do is duplicate them across all the pages so that when we actually add the uh, buttons, all right, so we've got these boxes here. If we wanted to then duplicate them, we need to make sure that we've actually got them selected. So let's just select them. We're going to hold down this, make sure that we can see the, the text, the uh, little thing in the middle there turn blue. So they're both blue now, I believe. And then we do... Uh, Let's see, duplicate across pages, duplicate across all the pages. Okay, so you can see we've got them on each of the different pages. That's good. It might not fit exactly. This is not really, I've kind of shoehorned this into it. So what's the next step? Well, the next step is to actually make the buttons work. So how do we do that? Well, we can just go into here, edit. And what we'll go into is getting a button on top of these things. So let's put our button on top. Okay, so, okay. Um, so next up here in the edit menu, we've got a button. So basically we go over here, we're gonna basically put the button uh, pretty much on, on where this, this area is. It doesn't really make much difference. Probably put it in the center, the actual uh, thing to click. Okay, so this is gonna be a previous page, right? Uh, so let's jump into that. And it's gonna be 
uh, click here to go to the previous page. Okay. And we'll do visible but doesn't print. And we'll make sure that our fill color, uh, no color here. All right. So then what do we need to do? This is this this section is basically if you want to have an icon. Uh, sometimes it's like if you have like a mouse over or mouse down, it, it might change uh, you know color of the text or something like that. That's for, that's what basically this. Is. I'm not going to do that here. Uh, and we're going to do mouse up, which is basically on release of the mouse. If you've used um, Action Script ever before in uh, Adobe Flash or Adobe Animate, as it's now called. So this is previous page. So that's the one we're looking for. Previous page. Okay. All right. So that's going to go take to the previous page. All right, so how do we actually duplicate the button? So that's basically done. Um, so what we can actually do is duplicate the button now. So um, yeah, I didn't show that previously with the text field. You could have done that with the text field as well. Um, so to duplicate the button, again, we need to make sure we've got our object selected here. Um, so we can go out here. Here's our object selection. We'll click over in this section, hold down control here, and we're going to move it over to this side. Um, we'll do it again. We'll actually do it a little bit like that. Um, and you can actually double click and it'll actually open up. You don't need to do a right click menu on that. All right, so this one is going to be called Next Page. And uh, click here to go to the next page. All right, and you see visible doesn't print and the appearance, uh, no uh, uh, color there. And um, this has got to be changed though, right? So we can delete that one, and we want it to the next page here. All right, so that is next page. Uh, the next step then is we actually want to make all the buttons work, right? Um, so in order to do that, we'll go to object selection again. Um, I'll make sure that I've got this button working, and I've got this button working. So these two here, right? And then we'll distribute these buttons across all the different pages, right? Uh, 1 to 20. And let's have a look how that works then. So we're going to go next page, next page. Is that the first page yet? So yeah, I think actually I was I was, tr I was trying something else before. So that's why there's a little bit of stuff in the background. Um, but you can see basically it's working pretty well. We can also actually look through how it's working as well. So it looks to be working pretty solidly. All right, welcome back to another Acrobat video. And this, we're going to be looking at this button here, which is the Add 3D Object button. So to get 3D objects, uh, Acrobat only takes one particular file type, which is called U3D. Now, when you go to a website such as uh, this website here, kenny.nl, uh, you basically download a bunch of stuff. And normally, you get your file types as FBX or OBJ. It's basically nothing that Acrobat can accept. So what you basically have to do is I'm using this program here called Mesh Lab. And what I've done is I've basically converted it um, from FBX, I converted it to something called X3D file type. And then I've converted that again to the U3D file type. You can't just go from FBX to U3D. For some reason, you have to go through X3D. There's, there's obviously certain things that um, I'm missing here with the textures uh, and some of the options. But just to make it simple, as long as you, you, you have to go through that process from FBX to X3D to U3D. Once you've got it to U3D, then, then we can actually use this button here. What we can do is we can draw our box. And basically, you've got a bunch of different options here, like a lot of options uh, that you can change here. And what I'm going to do anyway is just choose this file that we've got, the U3D file. Um, so like I said, that's the only one that works. And we press OK. So here you can see we've basically got our 3D object in here and it says click to activate. So once you've clicked activate, you can see we've now got a 3D object in Adobe Acrobat, which is pretty cool, right? Um, and if we want to move the box or change the size of the box, again, we have to use this button here, which is the object uh, selection. Uh, and that will let us move the box and obviously uh, change the size of the box as well. Um, if we want to see that menu option, you have to go back to your regular selection tool, and then you can see the box again. Uh, what do we actually have here? Uh, rotate, uh, spin, um, pan. So you can pan it round. 
uh, zoom. So pretty cool that you can actually do these sorts of things, right? In directly in Acrobat. Fly. Uh, we've got some uh, measuring tools. Uh, manage views as well. So you can see all the different stuff we could do with views. Um, also got this where you can basically see all the different uh, meshes. And then you can add your views here. Uh, you can see display. Uh, so you can see we've got some properties of the shape here. Um, also got all these different things. Shaded illustration. Uh, I can also change the background color here as well, which is cool. Cross enable a cross section as well. So basically, you can see that there's like a bunch of different options for 3D objects. Um, but yeah, the key is obviously to make sure you've got that file type uh, set correctly. So thanks for watching. Hello, welcome back to another Acrobat video. This one we're going to be looking at how to add sound. So we go into the edit menu and we do sound and then we draw our, our box out here. So we're going to do a, uh, let's do uh, this one. And then we'll just press OK for now before we do anything. Uh, it clicked activate. And disable. So there are actually a few more options that we can do. So we go to object selection mode. Um, so the launch settings, the content is clicked. So we've got the page containing the content is open, the page containing the content is visible. What we could do is in, do enable when it's visible. Uh, you can do, you can save it from the context menu as I just did, or uh, is not visible. So that would work, right? Also, we've got the option to do a poster. So that can be uh, an image to choose my background, my parchment, so I always do. All right. So we'll go out of edit. Uh, interesting, it's not stopping there. So let's try to do a new page. Okay, so here we are on page two. So let's try that again without this one. So yeah, it does kind of work, but I think it's actually better to have it the other way around. I think it's probably better to do the content is clicked and then um, disable content is selected from the context menu. Um, also, let's just take, check it out with the, um, so let's try it with the uh, outside. So that's one way to do it. I think that's probably an easier way to do it in terms of, yeah, either that way or um, um, or, or just having a slightly different playback style. I think enable when and disable when probably want to keep those the same. So thanks for watching. Uh, welcome back to another Acrobat video. Then we're going to look at full screen mode. So there's a few different options that we can do with this. So uh, let's see, we've got left click to go forward. Or we could do uh, maybe auto. This would be basically auto flip. Um, so you can still use the left click. Um, we're going to go advance every 10 seconds. And let's use a uh, box, box out. All right. So what if we want to, to do something else then? Well, the other thing we can do as well, if we go to our pages, um, let's do one and two, select those. And if we go to our page transitions, you can basically select, I've already done this, but basically um, you can select various different things. So for instance, we can do uh, dissolve for one and two. Uh, and also you can override the general uh, auto flip. Um, we'll auto flip in two seconds on this one. All right, and then let's do, We'll select from three to 13 uh, page transitions. 
You see, because I'd already set the third page, I believe, that's why it says varies. Um, and we could do zoom in, down, auto flip, one second. So yeah, so that's the sort of, the sort of thing you can do. So basically, if you want to uh, see it, you basically have to do the, the shortcut, which is control L. So that will start, uh, let's make sure we're at the beginning there. All right, so that's basically it. And then all we have to do is make sure we go back to the top of the page, control L. You can see you're going to get various different transitions here. These are on three seconds, and now it's going to go to one second in a moment. So you can see that happening. But yeah, just like different ways, basically combining page transitions and then your general preferences um, to create interesting transitions. Obviously, if you don't want it to actually go down, then it will stop at a certain point. See, it's probably does it stop here. Yeah, I think this is actually page 13 because it was the um, contents page. Uh, interesting, as I scroll up and down as well, you can, you can actually get the transitions back. Yeah, because basically when it enters the page, it will, it will do the transition again. But yeah, pretty cool anyway, so thanks for watching.